says Kamara. Hey. <laughs> uh, I, I just want to ask you, what was your first, you never saw Kamara's art before, right, Sheila? What was your impression when you saw it the other day? Well, besides being blown away, um, you know, it resonated so much in the heart. And when, when I looked at your art, um, you could tell that there was just this frequency about it. And it was like you were gathering this frequency up and putting it into like light language symbols so that when the person views your art, they're immediately receiving a transmission, whether they're aware of it or not. And that changes actually began to take place in the DNA. It, it is phenomenal. Thank you so much, Sheila. I, I appreciate it. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, you sound great. You sound great. Yeah. And I also want to say, I didn't discover Kamar because she's been around, but you know, when I saw her work, it's like something just aligned. And it's like, that was more true for me, whatever she was picturing. And it's still so complex. It, it's like hybrid art. It's like the art of the future, art of the higher mind. And everyone watching here and online will be just blown away because there, it is an initiation. It's a higher level of communication. It's beyond words. It's, it, it is a, a, a greater language of understanding. Um, so yeah, and we had some great comments by Nadi too the other day. So I know you have a presentation and ladies and gentlemen, Kamara Jones, if you don't know her work, be prepared to be blown away. <laughs> All right. So do you, and plus we'll, we'll, ch we'll chat during the, um, you know, if some people have questions while they're looking at this, I'll jump in like we did the other day. Okay. But that sounds great. That sounds great. Yeah, all right. absolutely. All right. Can you, uh, can you see yes. my screen? Yes, we can. Yes. Yes. So I just wanted to kind of open up. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, Sheila, you know, Neil, Alan, you guys are amazing. Everything you're doing with you know, uh, Portal to Ascension and New Reality is just fantastic. And I'm, I'm so grateful to, to be here, to be joined in. And I've have just been learning been so much. All day? Have yeah. you been listening? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All, all day. I, I loved, I loved, you know, Geraldine's presentation. It was fantastic. Yeah. Um, some of the uh, slides that she used are actually, you know, just a direct reference to what, you know, I'm going to talk about as well. Um, right. Yeah. I mean, you know, Barbara's talk was, was, was really great. Neil's, uh, college course was fantastic, you know? <laughs> so um, beautiful. Uh, I just wanted to say that um, my name is Kamora Jones. I'm a professional graphic artist, illustrator, concept artist. Um, I have never felt um, at home in my human body, even from the time that it was a young child. Um, and so I do identify as trans. Um, I don't hear a lot of people talking about the sort of connection between trans and hybrid or, you know, we're talking about indigo children or crystal children. Um, I was born in 77, that's why I have Art Soldier 77. Um, but yeah, I've always felt kind of like outside of my body, um, even beyond the male and female, uh, you know, the, the whole idea of gender neutrality or gender fluidity has always been a thing for me. But when I was very young, I couldn't come out because I was heavily in the church. I was, you know, in a religious family and I couldn't come out. But as time went by, um, I got more support. Um, I got married. My wife has always been my, my greatest supporter. Um, and so here we are. So when I was a child, um, I got heavily into Bible study when I was, you know, 9, 10, 11, and got very much into this sort of study of Christian mysticism. So trying to understand what this thing, this, this idea of the spiritual realm, this idea of the metaphysical realm or astral realm, what is that? You know, Ezekiel's vision of the cherubim, right? With the four faces, you know, with, with the wings, with the eyes all over the body. Uh, you know, Isaiah's vision of the seraphim, right? Um, in the revelation of, of John, it's, you know, the living creatures at the throne, right? These ideas of these spaces, these hyperdimensional spaces, these higher dimensional spaces that are present in like every religious, you know, faction in every religious book you know, in every religious background. So I'm going to take you on a little journey today, if you're so inclined, and um, talk a little bit about what I've been doing for the last few years. I had my first few, what I would call real conscious metaphysical experiences back in 2017. I was at a crossroads. 
felt like my guides were calling me. And I had a few experiences. My first experience was very conscious focus in general. Second experience was very extraterrestrial. So I'm going to take you through my journey and, and kind of bring you to where I am right now. So the first uh, iteration, this first sort of iterative part of the transmigration series had absolutely nothing to do with the extraterrestrials. It had to do with me trying to understand the human body, the human energy body, the human energy system, the light body, um, how we work, what our relationship with each other is within collective consciousness, what our relationship to ourselves you know, is, um, and, and how we fit into this world, into this physical world, albeit as souls, also with spiritual bodies, also with spiritual being. So I started by drawing these sketches, just kind of came to me. I had been looking at some stuff online. I had been getting some inspiration from some different places, but it was almost as if it was time for me to really start exploring and to start opening up to who I really am is if my guides or my mentors were calling out to me and saying, you know, wake up, it's time to go. It's time to find yourself. So the question I would ask you is what is a mentor? What is a spirit guide? I started thinking about this idea of the chakra system, the energy system. If you look at this piece here, Prana Data, you can see that there are lines connected to the energy body. This idea of the spiritual realm or the astral realm is a place of connectivity. We connect with each other. We connect with different entities. We connect on different dimensional spaces. We connect through different frequencies. So in a sense, we are like a node in space-time. But we're not just a node in space-time, we're a node in physical space. We're a node in hyperdimensional space. We're a node in mental space. And so we're always connected to something, regardless of you know, who we are, where we are, where we've been, you're always connecting with something. So it's important to be conscious of that and to understand that this harmony you can receive from connecting with energies that you resonate with and things that serve you can really kind of take you to the next level of your experience. I started understanding this concept of the Merkaba, um, just kind of you know studying and you know looking around and trying to learn as much as I can about the energy body and about ascension. So I tried to go in that direction a little bit, thinking about how the soul transmutes itself through time and space, through lifetimes, through different realities, through different spaces. This idea that through patience and education, one can evolve, one can find themselves, but that these experiences are, are very individuated. They're very uh, unique. Indeed, we are all one, but we are all individuated units of consciousness as well. I tried to understand what I was being told subconsciously. Um, it was if somebody was talking, you know, just kind of outside of, you know, outside of the space of, of sight and trying to understand the mechanics of how the metaphysical realm works. What is this, you know, how does this work? How does this function? We have these physical bodies, but we say so much that isn't said through body language, through connectivity, through actions, through unspoken words, through a glance, through a touch, through a feel. So I started trying to sort of uh, implement my own visual language to how that might look. This idea of experiential data structures, how we collect experiences in the sense that, you know, the Akashic Records records everything. We are also recording through our own experiences. We have these impressions of space and time, places we've been, places we're going, and the nonlinear, the nonlinear nature of our human mind allows us to forever be in those spaces. September 30th, 2017 is when I first started really thinking about the extraterrestrial concept of how we might be receiving information, how some of us might be receiving information, how some of us feel in our human bodies, where some of us come from. Some of us feel as star seeds or as some of us feel as beings who were outside of time, outside of space. Um, I felt that uh, one of my guides, one of my mentors might 
have some sort of connection with another world, another reality, a place of higher intelligence, a place of harmony, a place of peace, but a place of technological advancement so superior that these beings could really, really, you know, have something for us. They could really teach us something. And this idea that, you know, we call ourselves human. Yeah, you know, an aspect of us is human. I'm having a, you know, soul having a human experience. But we're also so much more than that. You know, we are light, we are energy, we are eternal. This idea that we uh, sign these contracts, these soul, these energetic contracts, uh, in order to project our way through pleasures and pains so that our souls can evolve, so that we can evolve, so that we can conjoin, so that we can create new things, create new ways of being. This idea that this is your journey. You don't, you don't have to like someone. You don't have to love someone. We all love each other, but there's something to be said about learning what love is. There's something to be said about learning what good and evil are. There's something to be said about learning to accept yourself and understanding that you're never gonna agree. You know, you, you might come to uh, a consensus, but this is a journey and we're all trying to find ourselves. And to those who do find themselves, everyone else can truly benefit from that. There isn't as much authenticity in this world as we need. When we learn to commune with the cosmos, when we learn to look beyond ourselves, we start to understand that there's so much more we could embrace. There's so much more we could encompass in our human experiences. We can tune into so many different things, things that are all around us, things that can inspire. We can speak to each other. We can speak life into each other. We can heal each other. But part of that is contingent upon whether or not you're willing to undergo the process of becoming of knowing. I started to think about, you know, 2018, right? I started to think about this idea of language and how oftentimes we're so beset by language. We, um, you know, we say things to each other and we fight and we war and we rage. War can start from a few words, you know, a misunderstanding can cascade into something so much worse. Um, although some words are, are loving and beautiful and can start beautiful relationships and beautiful connections. But I wondered about language and how language can sometimes get in the way. And I started thinking about, you know, how might an angel communicate with you? What if angels use some other type of communication? How would they do that? What if they don't speak the same language? So, Energy is a language, frequency is a language, right? Started thinking about, you know, different programming languages, all the different ways we can communicate, touch, feel, taste. Dreams are a communication language. So I started thinking, hmm, you know, dreams are a really great way for guides and mentors to really speak to us and to really help us learn what we need to learn. And it started kind of making sense to me that this language of the soul is beyond grammar it's beyond language, it's beyond dialect. It's something so much more complex, but so much more familiar and harmonious and perfect. Started thinking about this idea of mastery. How is mastery attained? You are in the universe, you're of the universe, you are the universe. We are many and we are one. When you think about some of the greatest spiritual teachers, there's this idea of harmonizing and unifying humanity, letting humans know that there's really no separation between them and God. In the case of the Christ or Yeshua, this idea of letting people know that there is a direct connection between them and God, that there is no low, that there's no high, there's one, there's love, there's peace, there's patience, there's kindness. But in the midst of all these things, a person can become, you know, power, confidence, blasphemous, adulterous, joyful, peaceful, brave, visionary, adventurous, attractive, sexy, intelligent. 
you can still, you still have that connection with higher consciousness. You still have that connection with source. It's fundamental to your being. Mastery may be attained by learning to accept the fact that you are part of all things and there is no separation and that this idea of racism has no basis in reality. This idea of bigotry, this idea of hating people just to hate, it, it doesn't even work. It's paradoxical. It's time for all of us to look in the mirror. Creativity is interesting in that it helps us to kind of get out of these spaces of rigid logic. Humans um, really love people who are valid. We like the people who speak well, the people with degrees, the people who um, have attained status, the people who run the world, the people who control money, the people who control industry, the investors, the producers, the financers. We like them because they're pretty people, they're beautiful, the stars, but there are more than just those people. There are more than just those souls. And our bodies are so complex. Each one of us is a wave, is a library, is a world, is a universe. I started really thinking about the spiritual realm again, 2018, thinking about the different places that the mind wanders during dream time, during trance time, during meditation time during creative expression time. So I kind of started drawing again. I started drawing these out, started thinking about them, started thinking about forms and how the space in which a person dwells in the mind and in the heart is the space in which they resonate. And how might a space that's unique to you look? How might your peaceful, quiet place look? How might the astral plane where you access the Akashic Records look. Some say this doesn't matter. When I was a kid, I was in church, I was preoccupied with this concept of the spiritual realm. And pastors, teachers would tell me, why are you so concerned with that? I'm like, because I'm an artist. Like, why would I not be concerned with it? This idea of quieting your mind, but also in the same breath, learning to accept yourself, accepting the fact that you came here to do the thing. You came here to be who you are. Parents can, you know, blame themselves all they want that their kids come out as gay or trans or whatever. But this is all a part of it. This is all a part of what we signed up for. This is how we evolve. This is how we grow stronger. This is how we become better. This is how we become more advanced so that maybe we can join the Galactic Federation someday. this idea of balancing your chakras, thinking about each part of yourself, each component, diving deep, understanding that we are so much more than we appear to be on the surface. It's time for us to wake up and understand that we are so beautiful and so multidimensionally exquisite that we have so much more to offer ourselves than these bondages, these daily, these weekly, these monthly, these yearly bondages we put ourselves in. Easter Sunday 2017 is when I had my first, what I would call my first bona fide metaphysical experience. Now, throughout my whole life, I'd been having different dreams, lucid dreams, you know, uh, different visions. I, I've always been into this sort of trying to understand the spiritual realm, but this, this experience was very different. It was alarming. It, it, it scared me because of how resonant and because of how familiar it was. I had this expression, this idea of souls being nodes or points of consciousness that had the ability to play with photons and energy and space and time in order to learn things, in order to evolve as souls. Then it came to me again. Well, how could humans evolve? What, 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 could, what could we do? How could we move forward? Maybe we need some mentors. I don't know. I always, I've always needed mentors. I've always needed guides, even in my professional life. 
So it became very clear to me that maybe we need help and, and understood, you know, at the time I wasn't really thinking about this, that, yeah, I mean, many believe that uh, our extraterrestrial guides are among us. Indeed, I believe that as well, but I started thinking, what if there was a faction of extraterrestrial or higher dimensional guides or beings who might be trying to help us covertly, subconsciously? What would their technology be like? What would their culture be like? How would they be able to help us move forward? How would they be able to help us see who we are in a nonlinear creative way? These were the first two drawings I did um, of the specific aliens that I draw for my Transformation series. Um, they kind of came to me. I, I was thinking about this idea of utopia. I have another series that's more utopian focused. And I was like, you know, how could we move, move forward? You know, what would these mentors be like? You know, they would really have to be able to get to us at our core. These aren't what I necessarily think so the beings I'm connecting with, I'm not exactly sure that they look like this, but I feel that they look like this. I feel that their technology is integrated within their bodies. I feel that they figured out how to create a culture that affords each citizen of their civilization to evolve, to add, you know, to the collective development. Using light language, using information, using telepathy to speak to each other on a soul level, on a deeper level than just this superficiality and these tricks we use to manipulate and control each other in our world. This idea that in a sense, humans are still like saplings. We still have a lot of growing to do. Our guides might be looking at some of us thinking, hmm, I wonder what could motivate them. I wonder what could motivate them to truly love each other. I'd also, as you can see, started really experimenting with light language. It made sense to me because in my Christian days, which was most of my young life and my um, the young adult life as well, um, the idea of speaking in tongues, the idea of speaking in another tongue and being guided by the spirit, it made sense to me from an illustrative standpoint that these sort of musical, non-grammatical forms um, could contain information depending on which way they bend and which way they curve, it made sense algorithmically, algorithmically to me as a designer. And so I started trying it out. I started writing, figuring out how I could put energy into each construct. Sometimes it's autopilot, autopilot kind of thing. And other times it's very uh, interactive. I mean, I have to draw it, I'm an illustrator, so I have to make it happen. I started getting information Indeed, in more of a narrative story-like kind of way um, about what these, how these beings would go about trying to enlighten us, trying to help us to get to a point of enlightenment. And this idea of covertly through, shall we say, um, hyperdimensional channels, through portals, through a sort of wormhole manipulation, being able to incept the mind, being able to speak to the deepest part of the human. But I, I got this whole impression of their culture trying to figure out what the technology of that would actually look like and how that process might actually work. Control Mechanisms was is literally still one of my most popular pieces. It shows up everywhere online. I, I've seen so many comments and so many people say things about it. <laughs> and, um, you know, that the alien's a demon, that they're, you know, the alien's weird, that it's beautiful, that it's crazy, that it's shocking. Once again, I would ask you, what is a guide? What is a mentor? What is a spirit guide? How might a guide or a mentor who doesn't speak the same language as you, how might they speak to you? Might I suggest that they would speak to you through your passions, through your talents, through your eyes, your inner eyes, your inner voice, your dreams, your visions? Might they speak to you in exactly the way that you've always wanted to be spoken to? 
these things that people say to us that are so controlling and manipulative and just rude sometimes. But would, would your higher dimensional guide not speak to you in exactly the way you need to be spoken to? What is the language of consciousness? Maybe it's the, maybe the language of consciousness is the language of understanding. When we join together, not necessarily in one mind, but with great ideas, when we bring our ideas forth, we can move forward, we can evolve, we can become something better, something greater. These particular beings at one time were just like us, how we've been since ancient times, you know, fighting, bickering, you know, seeing who has the biggest weapons, if you will. But they came to a point of understanding that through telepathic communication, the development of advanced technology that actually it helps the environment and helps themselves to grow, that they could really go somewhere with what they've been given, with their lives that they've been given, with their ability to procreate and to create more advancement, and with their ability to actually help other cultures that maybe weren't you know, as aren't as advanced as they are. You know, they realize that by growing up, they have the ability to mentor those who weren't so grown up. Realizing that maybe all beings in a sense are kind of playing with the same toys. We're all trying to figure out the same kind of things because we are all one. Connected, oneness, helping each other, speaking to each other. Not saying, hey, get your lazy butt up and get a job. Not saying, hey, what's wrong with you? How come you're acting like that? But truly being concerned with how I might help you or how you might help me become my best self, blessing each other. Understanding that when an individual is given the right situation, when an individual is given the right tools, they can become something great. You can become a genius of your craft. You can become a genius of your skill. If you just have the space to become that, to become your best self, they create a society, society that supports that, that supports the development of the whole and the development of the individual. And through that, they were able to advance themselves more than they ever thought they could. I got this impression that these particular beings were trying to teach me and trying to maybe help me tell others that there are different ways to learn things. We're in a psychedelic renaissance. So many people are trying to use psychedelics and do different things to open themselves up to higher consciousness. Um, and the initiative that I had or, or the information that I had was basically that, you know, yeah, you can, you as a human, you can do whatever you need to do, but that it's also important to consider your sanity. It's also important, important to consider your mind, your well-being, and doing exactly what you need to do, something that fits you for your growth, for your development. We all need mentorship. We all need this idea of understanding where we need to go or where we could go. I may have an idea of what I want or what I need or what I think I want or what I think I need. But sometimes guidance is good. Sometimes it's detrimental. But when a mentor guides you, it gives you a greater perspective. It gets you out of your own mind, helps you understand that maybe, just maybe, I've been doing it wrong this whole time. Or maybe there's something about what I'm doing that has promise, but I need higher intelligence. I can't do it on my own. Humans doing it on our own for centuries has brought us to a point of you know, ecological collapse. So regardless of whether extraterrestrials make themselves completely visible to all of us and come in and consciously say, hey, let's help, let's help you out, or whether we do it ourselves, which I think is extremely important. 
this idea of taking responsibility as we always need to do, um, it is very important for us to understand that mentorship and then moving forward with your initiatives is really, really important. I got this idea of contemplating structure. If you look at the two pieces left and right, the left piece is more conceptual. It feels like parchment, like uh, words being written on a page. The right piece is more void-like. It feels like energy that appears within the void that is out of the void, that permeates through the void. These are the two modes that were spoken to me, that were kind of revealed to me. And as we move forward, you'll actually see a lot more of this, um, these two modes, separate and collective. Interestingly enough, indeed, this was very story-like, very narrative. And I am indeed thinking of this in terms of a graphic novel and maybe as an animated series. But it, it's, not just, it's not just that, it, it's the idea that these elements are, are, are speaking to me um, in a way that is very akin to like what, who I am. This idea of actively choosing to move through the portal into the next part of the experience, being afraid, but not being so afraid that you're stifled by the fear. Migrating, transmigrating, migrating my energy from one place to another, from this experience to the next, from this level to that level. Being brave with our society and pushing the ball forward so that we can all be better. Integrating is also a really popular piece. I got this piece after my third, um, this was inspired by my third metaphysical experience in which if you look at the data dump over here, <laughs> that's kind of what I experienced, which was basically like this motherboard data structure type of space that kind of kind of spoke of this idea of this sort of source structure that all souls are actually integrated into. I was trying to figure out how to integrate the experience. It was a difficult experience because it was it made me feel small. It made me feel un, united with all that is. And there's a lot of all that is. There's a lot, it's huge, it's great, it's massive, right? Our reality frame is massive. Um, let's not even talk about other universes, other reality frames. Our reality frame itself, our universe here is massive. And so this idea of a being teaching me or teaching us that you must integrate the experience. You must understand that indeed you are all one within that experience. You are all one with a larger con you know, consciousness and cosmos. This is something we must understand that we aren't these singular entities that have the ability to just do whatever we want and to get away with it all the time. That there is always consequence, but that there is always beauty if we can move forward strategically and intelligently. like a song, a musician sings a song, people feel it, they feel it hard, right? Sometimes, you know, it's like a rap, you know, you feel it like, you know, one of Neil's raps, you know, you're like, you feel it and it speaks to you and it speaks to you in your innermost being, especially if it's something that resonates, if it's a topic that resonates with you. And so there's this idea of singing beautifully to each other with this song of perseverance our ability to be better. We don't have to give up. We don't have to keep fighting. We don't have to believe that this system of competition that has prevailed within our human historical record, um, that, that has to be the way that, that it has to be. We can be more than that. The technique that these beings use is called projection, projectionosis. It's a name that I kind of got, I don't know. I mean, it's something that kind of came to me. This idea of speaking to the through the third eye, deep into the um, innermost being, basically, this this method of uh, accessing the akashic records, or you know some sort of aspect of programming that happens between the akashic records and the individual. I still don't understand it myself. 
I can draw it, <laughs> but I have a long way to go as far as understanding it. And once again, this motif of mentors kept coming back to me. So I just kept drawing them. And in their culture, even in their culture, even though they had stumbled upon over a long period of time, stumbled upon and, 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 and developed and worked hard to create a society that truly helps the citizens and the creatures within their societies, within their world, there were still different factions. There were still different belief systems. Some believe that the beings should be focused on continuing to build their own culture, while others believe that their culture should be reaching out as mentors, um, as guides to cultures who need help. But the thing that remained was this idea of energy convergence and cultivating the energy of the culture, cultivating the energy of the collective and the individual. These were expressions that I kind of channeled ideas of how their psychic energy might work. Um, I had the impression of them going through training programs to understand how to use their psychic energy in order to be able to connect with human beings or beings on other worlds as well, or in order to be able to connect with each other, that this technology mixed with these psychic abilities, mixed with their collective overarching societal technology, technology um, really allowed them to develop a culture that afforded them the ability to think outside the box, if you will. In this so-called training program that some of these beings would go through to learn how to access the human mind, they would work together creating energy structures and geometric data containers. Geometry, math, you know, being the language of the universe, how one could maybe sculpt dreams or sculpt visions out of geometry. How one could use geometry to speak in a way that words could never speak. And how through telepathy, you can always say what you need to say as opposed to being misunderstood. So I'm going to breeze through the rest of these. I see that um, I've taken up a lot of my time. <laughs> Library um, has a lot to do with the Akashic Records and the, the sort of hyper dynamic connectivity we have with the Akashic Records. Um, how we have access to the experiential data, um, if we understand the frequency we're trying to access, the right channel. And so um, understanding that everything we do has, has a resonance, it has a frequency, it has a vibration. And so when you're, when you're doing things, when you're, when you're creating actions, when you're creating thoughts, understand that they have power because they literally have their own frequencies. They literally have their own structures. This idea of thoughts as structures, I think is an important thing for humans to consider. Soul embryo, guidance. What could we do? How could we move forward? How do we balance ourselves? How do we find our purpose? Is purpose in balance? Is purpose in encouraging each other? Is purpose in understanding who we really are? I have this impression of some of the younger beings learning from some of the older beings, teaching them about energy, teaching them about the holistic nature of the universe, understanding that nature is so much more than just something to manipulate. The mind is so much more than we give it credit for. It was fascinating to me over the years how some people um, speak about religion, they speak about God, but they don't really understand the creative concept related to God. In a way, it's like you can have all these degrees, you can have all these um, accolades, but you may not understand, you may not be able to see the vision, you may not be able to get it. It was fascinating to me at some point in time, I think I decided and understood that as an artist, 
I should draw it. I should draw what's in my mind's eye. And then I should encourage others to explore consciousness through creative endeavors, through writing, through drawing, through painting, through dance, through music. Because the more we collect these ideas of higher consciousness, of our guides, of the mechanics of the universe, the more we can inspire each other to move beyond these frivolities of our human civilization. We can join together. We can find new ways to communicate. We can be better. We can be more. We can be mindful. We can create spaces that truly support us. We can create codes and we can access codes that help us to speak in ways we've never spoken before, that help us to create technology and programs and movements that we've never seen, that we never could have imagined. We can understand that these codes that permeate through the universe and, and permeate through all of our civilizations and between us, we can understand that words really have power, that a look, a glance really has power, that everything means something. Some would say that that's overthinking it, but the fact of the matter is that we ruin more relationships by not considering someone else's feelings. So when you're manipulating the geometry around you, understand that the geometry is producing codes. Those codes are flowing everywhere. They're flowing between energy bodies. They're flowing between souls. They're flowing between spaces. Everything has an energy, everything has a frequency, and you're always connected to something. You can create emotions. You can create containers for emotions. But we can also join together and figure out a new way. We can create new operating systems. We can be so much more like these beings. We can look into portals and see our possibilities, not out of scarcity, but out of possibility. We can learn of our power. We can learn the proper place for religion, the proper place for tradition. It is all important, but it's also a tool. It's also a stepping stone. We can speak to each other in a deep way. I'm just gonna scroll through these. I'm take, I've taken up too much time. <laughs> No, you haven't taken. No, this is great. I am like getting such um, mind opening, and so are a lot of people in the chat. Um, actually, I wanted to just look at that text from the Mind Lab. I was starting to yeah. read. It. Could you just? Yeah, go yeah. Ahead? Go ahead. Go ahead and feel free to start asking questions. I, I have a few no, more, but yeah, no, I wanted to see some of the latest stuff. But the Mind Lab was, um, yeah. What's yeah. this? Can you just read that? Yeah, the mind is a structured maze capable of hiding definitive truths and encoding reality into allegorical expressions for the sake of soul developments. That which is needed in the moment becomes amplified through the physical experiences of the current reality frame. The most conscious and existentially persistent truth still runs or processes data in the background, feeding nonlinear perspectives and memories into the soul's current mission. The mind is a playground and laboratory for the soul. Wow, that, I just I just have to absorb all that because yeah, you, you know, the, and you yeah, keep scrolling through because there's some stuff I haven't seen, and you only got us up to 2020. And um, <laughs> yeah, let me um, let me let me. Uh, like I said, you guys need to go. You definitely need want to go onto um, Art Soldier 77 on Facebook or on Instagram. Uh, mm -hmm. particularly on Instagram, Instagram, uh, the pieces go all the way back to 2017 on Facebook. I didn't start updating my Facebook art soldier 77 page until a little bit later. Um, but they're both accessible. You know, you can both get in there. You can go see what you need to see. You can right. read all the captions. I, I channel the captions along with the art. Um, you know, so it, all of it's there. It's all, it's all provided. I, I do not have all oh, the Wait, wait, I haven't seen these. These, sorry, what were you saying? You haven't, what? Oh, you're fine. Yeah, you're fine. Uh, not all the pieces are available um, as prints or as shirts just yet. I'm working diligently to try to get all that together. I'm also working on a Oracle deck as well. So um, getting prints ready for sale is, is a bit of a task as well. So definitely go check out the Society 6 store. Definitely go check out the Teespring store. 
Um, and definitely should just check out the account and just please, you know, send me a line, send me a DM. Um, what what is your, uh, how do you want people to send you messages through what? Um... Just do, uh, it's Art Soldier 77 on Instagram. Okay. It's at Art Soldier 77 or on Facebook. Um, and both of those have messaging messaging systems where you can uh, oh. send me messages or, or say what you need to say what you need to say. Seraphic math. Seraphic so. math. You know, wonder. yeah, this was interesting. Yeah, this is interesting because, um, like I said, when I was, you know, back in the day when I was in the church, I was really interested in the concept of the seraphim and all these eyes, you know, and uh -huh. what I got when I channeled this one was that um, these eyes are so a person has two eyes. And through those two eyes, they have a whole human experience through many different years of experience. But what if you had more eyes? So every mm -hmm. set of eyes has a human experience. It's a library of information, collects a library of information. So if your body was covered in eyes, you would have many different experiences. <laughs> it's like each eye is like its own reality frame in a sense. Wow. Yes, yes. And, and this one, wonder, this is a pretty new one. Choose 2021, right? Wonder. Yeah, yeah. This is interesting because uh, I had this idea of, I'm, I'm trying to show, as I get more information about what their world would actually be like, mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to show more of the fact that they're very much like us in a sense. Um, and that, you know, in a sense, you know, maybe some of them would be considering the possibilities of joining with different um, cultures and trying to access different types of energy in that. You know, you would have some beings in that culture that are more individualistic. You know, you'd have some that are more collective. Um, this idea that we're just out on this earth by ourselves, you know, that we're alone, that we're so secluded is mm. it's kind of a limited, limiting and, you know, idea. Um, I think I think all beings have something in common, even different types of creatures that aren't human. We all have something in common. We're having a living experience, you know. Well, the big thing I, I got from your presentation today and to get from all your art is the ability to think abstractly. We, we want to think in words. We want to say this means that. And these forms, there are no definitive thing. Wait, wait, can you go back to that last one for a second? I just want to. Yeah, that one with these beings. Is that a human that's um, being downloaded there on the right? Yeah, that's right. So the idea is that on the left, it's more of a physical construct, maybe like in a ship. Uh, these humans are being analyzed, right? right? But on the right, what you have is more of an astral construct. So this idea that these beings have figured out through the technology and through their uh, sort of psychic science or whatever you want to call it, I don't know, um, right. figured out a way to do work through the astral realm or through the physical realm mm. or through a, sort of, through a hybrid of both, right? Right. And, and, and we're always being so if we're open, if our minds are opened enough, we can get these new frequencies that are coming in. I mean, I think that's the threshold we're at now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, why can't I mean, when I read when I hear all these experiences, I read all these experiences, I listen to all these experiences about mm -hmm. uh, different experiences and, you know, with with extraterrestrials. And then I read these experiences in spiritual literature, you know, ancient spiritual literature, modern spiritual literature about, mm -hmm. you know, um, connections with, you know, angels and such and different energies in mm -hmm. spiritual realms. It's all very similar. I mean, it's not right. that all of it's the same. It's not like you can reduce it to that, but you know, why, why not? I mean, if your spirit guides, if your angelic spirit guides are trying to get you to evolve and you have these, um, these extraterrestrials who are maybe be trying to do, they're maybe trying to do hybrid experiments or trying to, you know, build their culture, build their race, you know, trying to find new ways to procreate. Um, mm -hmm. There's that, but there's also something to be said about getting downloads of information, you know, as well. And learning how to see ourselves in a more expanded, more abstract, more higher dimensional, multidimensional way as well. Right. But you're, you're giving us these abstractions and applications. I've never seen anyone combine the geometric forms with a humanoid type form. So... In, in such perfect integration. So one reflects the other. So, I mean, yeah, that's what I, yeah, um, yeah, it is, it is, you know, it is what it is. When you think about um, 3D modeling or 3D rendering uh, technology, um, when you're building a model in 3D, you're building it with geometry, you're building it with quads, you're building it with, um, you know, and, and you're connecting the pieces so that they actually build a form. And so when you're thinking about geometry, think of it as everything in nature is geometric. Everything in nature has a surface that's built through uh, geometric structures, through a geometric wave or form or vibration. 
Um, if you think about thought, if you think about collective thought, collective thought is also geometric in a sense, but more in a holographic kind of way. So it, it's, it's this idea, what I mean taught by drawing all these and having created all these, what I've been taught is that it's really great to think of everything in terms of expanded components. Mm -hmm. Every little thing is like a computer. Every thought is like a program. Mm -hmm. You know, every atom is a is a world, if you will. Yeah. And and every little piece of creation is filled with light language waiting to be interpreted and felt and integrated and accessed. If yeah, that's right. That's right. It, it's not you know, this idea that it's simple and that it's just evolved and that it's just biological. Mm. No, think of it as if this is, if we're thinking of this as a simulation or as a, you know, holographic reality, right. then every little piece has its own like data. It has its own programming language. It has its own system inside of it, which is the case. I mean, this is what we learn in biology and what we learn in just, you know, physiology and mm -hmm. anatomy and everything else anyway. So that is true that everything is multidimensional. Right. Could you go back yeah. to that last one for a second? I just wanted, that's a new one too. I haven't seen that one. And that is just, I mean, these worlds are just coming to you, right? They're just kind of filling your mind and in, in, in a sense, and you just transcribe well, what you're seeing. Well, the idea is that, you know, this particular, so what I'm showing these beings, right? They have a specific world, but then they also have this technology. So when you're looking at this grid mind access on the left here, uh -huh. that's one of their, that's one of their so-called computer systems. Okay. But their computer systems are integrated into the astral realm. So they found a way to connect their technology with astral technology, with Akashic technology. That, and, that, and this is this is something where you know humans are, are so we're so fixated on just like controlling every little thing we want to control the money we want to control this we want to control that it's like we have such a long way to go when it comes to all the different ways in which you know souls and energy can communicate so they've sort of figured out how to manipulate energy in the astral realm in the astral plane but also have it affect the physical plane as well it's very creative some of this is just how i'm thinking about it i'm absolutely sure of that um yeah. You know, but it's I very clear to me that there's more than that. I, I, yeah. You're like an ambassador. You're like taking snapshots of these fifth dimensional realities and <laughs> here and showing us. This. So, it's know, fun. That, it's fun stuff, though. I'm a, I'm an artist. I like drawing. I like painting. And the spiritual right. understanding the spiritual realm has always been an obsession of mine since I was a kid. And you know, when I started having those metaphysical experiences in 2017, it opened me up to this type of energy to where basically I just sit now. I'll just sit for a minute close my eyes, I'll send an intention on into the void and I get it back because I'm tuned into that frequency. And so I'd like to encourage everyone who thinks of themselves as creative or does not think of themselves as creative to consider what you might find if you can just tune in and maybe kind of sketch something out or maybe, you know, bang out a tune on the keyboard. You know, you may find something that you need or that others need um, and it may give you the insight you've been looking for. Wait, so just show your um, your your website again. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so you you make, yeah, this is great. Anyone watching can order and, and pretty much any of uh, some of the things you've seen here. Um, anyone who's seen here, they, most of them are available in prints, right? Yeah, uh, a lot of them are available. Not all of them are available. I would right. say <laughs> I would say not even like 75 percent. I have a lot of work to do um, when I post a lot of times I'll post a work in progress. Um, mm -hmm. But I have to do clean up and then I have to make sure that it prints correctly because I society six handles all the um, printing and um, distribution and such. So it, it takes it takes a while to refine each print to the point where it's ready to be sold. And, and same thing with the T-shirts. So, yeah, definitely go check them out. There's a lot there's a lot there that you could purchase if you wanted to. 